how does that relate to us? I mean, we're talking about Jews, and most of us wouldn't be Jews here except for Saxon. <laughs> I was thinking about it. I mean, why was I born into a family who are pastors and born basically straight into the church? I mean, what's the point? Why, why didn't God choose for me to live in a family that knew nothing about God than then have an encounter in my bedroom, and then come into church. I mean, maybe that would be better because then I would just be reliant. Well, or maybe, you know, what, what's the point of someone being, you know, born in Africa in the circumstance that they're in? Or what's the point of you being born in Sydney or New Zealand or in, in the family and the situation that God has put you in? And so there are different levels of privilege that God has by his grace, not of our own merit. The, the only, th- I, can't, I can't glory in this role or glory in the fact that I was born into a Christian home, but what I can do is use the privilege that God has given me appropriately and respond by giving it back to him and using it for his glory. So what we do is dismiss those things and wish we had something else and wish we had a different situation. And so the Jewish people basically fumbled their privilege. They were given the oracles of God, Paul says, which is basically the promise that was given to Abraham. And they were given the actual words of God and a revelation that was reserved for them as a nation of Israel. They, they, were, they were given this, this privilege. And so Paul is unfolding that even though they got given this, they actually were unfaithful to it. And therefore, the covenant that God had committed to them was broken. It wasn't fulfilled. And so now Paul begins to unfold, well, if that covenant isn't fulfilled, if God didn't live up to it, well, is he unjust and is he unfaithful? But Paul quite clearly comes right back at them, almost playing the devil's advocate here playing both sides of the argument, bringing it back to them and saying, no, God is faithful and true. He never changed. His agreement with them never changed. But what he was doing was showing the whole world through this nation the need for him. He chose that nation of Israel to reveal his glory that even through the oracles and the word and a special revelation and a special privilege that they couldn't even rely, they couldn't even rest on that merit. They still needed God beyond that privilege. But what happened was they took that special privilege and tried to earn salvation and and used the law to try and save themselves. Matthew Henry, a great commentary, says this, the law could not save in or from sins, yet it gave the Jews advantages for obtaining salvation. Their stated ordinances, uh, ordinances, education in the knowledge of the true God and his service, and many favors shown to the children of Abraham were all means of grace, and doubtless were made useful to the conversation of many. But especially the scriptures were committed to them. Enjoyment of God's words and ordinances is the chief happiness of a people." So we see here that they were given the opportunity. And Paul's saying that, okay, the nation of Israel didn't get saved through this, but that doesn't mean certain individuals discovered salvation through this. You've got to understand that the cross is eternal, backwards and forwards. And so at the point where Christ died, the cross became able to reach into those that believed God and were justified, as Habakkuk tells us. And we see in Romans 1.17 that Paul quotes that chapter and that verse. And so we see that it's not by any merit. God is trying to show us throughout Scriptures. He's trying to show us here tonight. He's trying to show you yesterday and tomorrow that you can't earn this. You could have been born into the most incredible family, or you could have been born into the worst family, and now you've made yourself something. But whatever it is, it's all by the grace of God. You still need God. 
It doesn't matter where you find yourself. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand if we believe that tonight. We need God. We need God. I'm so encouraged by this passage because as we'll see in Romans as it unfolds, that Paul's trying to, pro, trying to reveal something to them, that they were unfaithful, but God was still faithful. And I think in my own world and, and people I talk to that we're afraid to approach God because of our own mess ups and our own unfaithfulness to Him and to others and, our, and what we've committed to and our word and and, and, and our whole life that we've, we feel we've totally messed it up so that somehow changes God's response back to us. And so what we do is we fall into the trap of how the Jewish people were living and now try to earn back that faithfulness. We try to earn back this relationship that was never earned by us in the first place. It was freely given to us by the mercy and the grace of God. And so we as young adults here tonight, we run as hard as we can. We mess up in life. We're unfaithful to what God has called us to do, unfaithful in our words and our worship to Him or our thoughts, our actions, all this different stuff. And so therefore we create space between us and God by our works and by our our laws and our regulations and whatever it is, we've all got them. And now we have space and we justify that space by those things. But God does not want you to look at His character based on your decisions or lack of faith. He wants, to, he wants you to see through Jesus Christ and His work on the cross how faithful He is to us even when we've messed up and even when we continue to mess up. 